Shalom, Israel. This is heaven. If you had a child, or if you have a child, how would you want your child to be? Let's say you just had your first baby. You have so many plans for them, so many things you want to get them, and you just want them to be the apple of your eye, your little shooting star. You cherish and you love your kid, right? I mean, as a parent, you should love your child. You give your child the world. Let's say you had endless money to buy them whatever they want and take them around the world. How would you want this kid to be? Do you want him to be happy? Do you want him to be kind and loving to everyone, but especially to you, right? Do you want this kid to always stick by you till the end and always be your baby boy or your baby girl? Do you like when you give this kid a gift? And he or she is so surprised and happy and they just give you a big, cute smile. Doesn't that make you feel good inside? Especially if they run up to you and hug you and squeeze the last breath out of you. I mean, that might not feel good, but it feels good. You know what I mean. So, when you see this kid, this apple of your eye, this little sunshine of yours. And let's say they are walking to school and you are walking with them. And you see someone walking up ahead of you. And let, let's just say this is a guy. And the guy you see is somebody who is your worst enemy in life. Somebody who tried to kill you before. Somebody who tried to kill your mama. Somebody who tried to get you locked up in prison for life. Somebody who stole from your house. Some rapist. You name it. Just the worst criminal you can think of on this earth. And then you see this guy come up to your kid and grab your kid's hand. And shake their hand and say, hey, how is it going today? And your kid is like, hey, Jack, everything is good. How are you? How do you think you would feel in that moment? Would you try to stop them and tell them to stay away from this person? And what if they don't listen to you? What if they curse you out, call you out of your name, and then at night when you sleep, you hear them run out of the door. And then later you find out they run away to go live with, with your enemy, your worst nightmare. Let's say it was your little girl. And they fell in love with this guy. Or, or the opposite way. is your little boy and this criminal was a woman. And he fell in love with her. And now he wants to put a ring on that finger. And now over her, you become the worst nigga that ever stepped foot in his life. And he resents you now for ever telling him to stay away from her. And then now he cut you off and say, You never gave me nothing, mama. I did this. This matching, these cars, this money. Is what I made. I did this. And I ne never needed you. I did this on my own. And that's all the things you gave to him. You paid money for him to go to college. You paid money for everything he or she ever wanted in life. And then he completely despises you. And cuts you off. Over some fantasy he or she has. That this person is a friend. That you're trying to keep them safe from. I know a normal parent. Will feel broken hearted you have mixed feelings of anger and hurt and betrayal and i know anything you got that child you want to take it back and smash it all at least that's what i want to do and then let's say the end of the story you and him or her haven't spoke for years he just living his life and you living yours and then you keep seeing on his youtube channel and on his twitter his twitter videos and pictures of them and this criminal they so in love with you see their marriage pictures you see they had your first grandbaby that you ain't ever got to speak with and everything they fun moments together and then one day you turn on your tv and you you watching the news then he or she your your child your apple of your eye your shooting star they were murdered not just murdered brutally murdered by the criminal they married and they and they killed your grandchild by them and now that criminal is going to jail what is the worst that's inevitably going to come to your head even through the grief and pain and heartache that's going to be i told you so isn't it why am i telling this story because in this story you israel you are the child and the way you are acting is how you treat God through your ingratitude. Except with God, you are far worse because a parent can't even compare to God and everything he has done for you. So I made this video to make us think. 
is there a way that we are living through life ungratefully to God without realizing it? And I'm going to read the meaning of ingratitude. Gratitude is forgiveness of our poor return for kindness received. So you are forgetting by your actions the blessings you are receiving from God through people. And you are not returning the favor of kindness that is being showed to you. See, when we think about ingratitude, some may usually think of how they are being ungrateful to their parents, their husbands, their friends, their wives, whoever. But did you ever consider just how much you are ungrateful to God? And even more ungrateful on a higher scale than you are with people. And people may believe that they are 100% grateful, but are you? Let's look into the definition of gratitude now. Grateful definition is feeling or showing an appreciation of kindness and is thankfulness. And is to be fully aware of, realize fully, gain in value, hold dear, increase the value of, recognize with gratitude, be grateful for. So do you believe you are showing all these things to God? Are you really holding in value everything he gives to you and everything he does? Now we all know we can never give the favor back to God. God created everything. There is nothing he wants or needs from us. But as a believer, if you love God with all your heart, might, and soul, you should show your gratitude to the Lord for all that he has done for you and for what he is doing for you. Right now, he is letting you breathe. Little things people take for granted, like being able to move your head and move your mouth to speak. Majority of people, if not everyone, take takes these things for granted. When you see people who don't have these things, they can't walk, they crippled or paralyzed, stuck in a bed, or they have cancer. But, you know, what once they had, it ain't me, so I don't care. That's probably how most people think, and towards them. But do you know what I see in people who are like that? A sense of gratitude and happiness not letting the burden of life put them into a slump you see these kids with deformities and they still act happy and do what kids do without a worry you even see animals there's dogs whose legs back legs don't work and they just drag themselves around and still be a dog do what a dog do that's true gratefulness but as you notice it's an odd thing of how you see somebody grow up with nothing and then they're the happiest person you ever met. And then you meet somebody who got it all, who was born with a silver spoon in their mouth, and then they're the most disgruntled, ungrateful, spoiled brat you ever met. And now you see how I'm making a point with this. It's how God works. And people may not like the way God do things, but the way he works is beautiful. It makes sense. And God is far above, far, far above the example of a parent. But for the human mind, that, that is the closest thing I could think of that maybe you can understand. God wants the best for you. God gave you everything you have, not people. So it's wrong to give credit and praise to men. It's evil and wicked to give praise to Christ crucified who didn't do crap for you. All he was, which is the true Christ, Jesus was a messenger of God who delivered God's message, God's word, the books he made to save your souls from eternal hell. It's in gratitude to the Lord to say, I wish I wasn't born, or I want to kill myself, or I hate the way I look. I wish I wasn't born black. I wish I wasn't born white. I wish I wasn't born Asian, whatever you are. I wish I had this and that. And so you go get a surgery for bigger lips, for bigger this and that that I don't care to mention and at the end of it you made yourself look like a freak of nature especially the ones the devil in them make them think they're tired of being a girl and now they want to be a man and the men who tired of being men and now they want to be somebody's housewife all these thoughts of ingratitude is from the devil when God made you perfect how you are and you should love the way God made you Stop listening to these people who are sent from the devil to tell you, you ugly, you ain't good enough, you can't do this or that, cause you black. You can't change, you gone too far. Kids who go to school have and still probably is killing themselves and hanging themselves over stuff like this. 
when it's just the devil getting you sent to the fire for your ingratitude because to commit suicide is ingratitude to the Lord God created you for a reason and God loves you and not for you to go take yourself out now I am not saying you need to be arrogant and prideful for what God gave to you because we all know God hate the proud and we hate the pride in each other God wants you to be grateful yet humble so the story I'm using is to teach the lesson that God loves you his believing servants even more than you love your own self God never sleeps God never rests and God is watching you all the time God is protecting you when you go to sleep God is protecting you when you're driving, when you are walking down the road outside at night. God is always there. And when there's danger ahead, if God wills to protect you from it, he is going to put an obstacle in your way or warn you through a feeling, your conscience, or through somebody. Trust me, I've been through it. It has been where suddenly there's coyotes or dogs outside of the house just walking around. It's like, why is this happening? Why is there dogs around the house? But sometimes God send these things because he don't want you to go out because there's some trouble ahead. God is always sending something there to protect you, whether it looks like a blessing or a curse. It may rain one night that you're about to go to the store or about to go somewhere fun because God is trying to keep you back from something. Could have been to the police ahead, killing somebody or some, some murderer out, you know. And these scriptures is the love God is sending you. The laws. To save you and to protect you from what is to come and from going to hell. I know people who find yourself struggling to do the right things. There is a demon in you that wants to fight against doing godly things such as reading and studying the scriptures. From praying to God, from preaching the word, from talking to God and praising him. You find a resistance in you to flee from that and go have fun. Go do what the devil is telling you is more important, like a job, watching a movie or a TV, shopping, whatever it is. What it is, is the devil is slickly getting you and worshiping something else and putting yourself before God and worshiping your own self. You need to realize God does not need you. God does not need his creation, period. But you are in need of God. God is the one who gave you life. God is the one who lets you do the things you enjoy. And if it's sin, he still gives you time after time to get it together until you meet your end. Yet still, he feeds you. He clothes you. Everything you got is not from men. It's not that you so holy roly. Are you so fine? Are you so smart that you just got it? No, you reap what you sow. But God is giving it all to you. God is being gracious to you. Even you growing in spiritual knowledge, receiving good inspiration, seeing the signs, is all from God and His goodness. Every day you wake up, throughout your day, your whole day, you need to be thanking God for everything and everything that is happening, good and bad. Because even the bad is a blessing in disguise. It's to punish you now, so maybe you learn from it and become a better, more humble person. If you never go through nothing, how do you expect to learn? That's why God says, don't spare the rod and spoil the child. Discipline is the only way most people learn and through stern teaching. And like my daddy always used to use as an example, if you see a kid about to fall into a ditch and you speak softly, like them fake Christ crucified worshipers, them passive niggas and say, Jerry, don't do it. Like a little mouse. You think they gonna listen to that? Or if you say, Jerry, get your way away from that before you fall. Which one is most effective? At least the yelling might make them jump back. It's like the reaction when you see a bug or a snake or something. That's how God teaches you. And when you want to be a knucklehead and not listen, then you're going to fall in the ditch and break your leg. And then for the next time you walk in, you might want to look down to see if there's another ditch you might fall into because you learned something. So be happy and thankful even when you fall and break a leg. At least you're getting paid for for something and hopefully some of your sins is getting removed off your plate and maybe you learn to act better. Treat God with love. Like he said, love him with all your heart, might, and soul. God is your guardian. 
He is your king, and so you should treat him that way. Treat God as your bestest friend you ever had, because he is. Nobody is more loving and forgiving than God is. And it's never possible for the most obvious reason, but also because who created the people you love? Who made these people? Your family, your friends, the people that love you. God put that love in their hearts. And God made the believers loving and giving and compassionate to each other. And you can say they make you laugh by telling jokes and they got fun personalities. Well, guess what? God made them with those personalities and God made them with that humor. But you think God didn't create humor? He made it all. Everything belongs to God and everything good comes from him. Even a smile. God sent that smile to you. You think God wants you to be all drawled up and like a storm drill sergeant serving him? I don't think so. God wants you to be happy and thankful and joyful when you serve him. Yeah, he wants you to be serious when it comes to saving yourself from hell and your family from it. Your brothers and your sisters in the faith. Just like how you will be if a war started. You ain't going to be joking with the people you at war against. No, you're going to plan and be as tactical as you can to annihilate them. And that's how God wants you with the devil. And those who work for the devil. Those who lost and are worshiping Christ. He wants you to fight them with your knowledge. And bring people to the light and shine light where darkness is at. Be a good sport man. Be a good champ. Be a good servant. Those who are going to shine bright are those who are the best. Those who strive the hardest amongst us. Just like the brightest star in the sky. Or how hard so-called stars, famous people work hard to stay on top and be in a devil spotlight. That's how you need to be for your Lord. Be the first to pray. Be the first to do what is right. Be the first when invited to praise God and to hear his word and show a good example for the rest who gonna sit back and be lazy and do what they feel like or think is more important. Race to God, because this is a race. And the one who gets first in the end is not the ones who wait on others and put themselves last. It's the first. This is heaven.